Thank you, Rachel, um, for those kind words. Um, as the last speaker, I think um, I have either the best or uh, the, the worst. Uh, the best in which, uh, you know, we have heard so much, you know, and, and I am sure each, each one of us, uh, in, we, we have a lot to take in, to ponder, and I'm not too sure whether I should add more to that. But it's been great. Uh, Julita and I, we are most privileged uh, to be here uh, with you. It is so good to meet some uh, long-standing friends, uh, those of you who have served in our part of the world, and uh, those of you who, in your prayers, have been remembering us, those of you who have been following the political situation in Malaysia, uh, we feel elated to hear that you have been praying, supporting us in, in, in prayers uh, for a better Malaysia. And uh, this is uh, what we are looking forward to uh, at home, um, politically. But I, I bring uh, greetings um, in the name of uh, the church in Sarawak and uh, Brunei. For those of you who are not too familiar, uh, let me just um, uh, try to... Right, there we are, a little uh, speck uh, in the Far East. But having said we are a little speck, in actual fact, uh, the Diocese of Kuching of which um, I am uh, uh, the, the, the bishop now, taking over from Bishop Boli, whom I believe a good number of you are acquainted with, uh, a friend of. Uh, the diocese is almost as big as the whole of England in terms of its geography. And so travel can uh, be very challenging. Uh, two of hours to 15, 16 hours from one end to the other. Or uh, at times, a short distance, but take the same amount of hours because of the communication uh, breakdown. If, if I may update you, especially those of you who have served in Kuching and in uh, the province before, as to where we are right now. Uh, I was sharing with a sister uh, over breakfast, and she said, we, we didn't know that there are Christians in Malaysia. Um, well, I'm not surprised, because Malaysia is, in the eyes of the world and in the eyes of Malaysian Muslims, an Islamic state. Uh, you know? uh, but I want to assure you that um, the church is thriving, we are struggling, yes. There are times when we feel a great deal of pressure. And there have been cases whereby the, the church was set, uh, you know, uh, well, in fact, in fact uh, uh, a group of four, 14 churches, including uh, my own, um, were set on fire and bricks, stones were thrown at, at our church. Uh, one pastor is still uh, missing, um, kidnapped. We know this was the work of the previous government. Uh, we had a video of, of his uh, kidnapping, plus another uh, pastor couple and one Muslim activist. They're still missing. People of goodwill. Many of you would have heard how our Bibles were confiscated and that we were not, we, we are still not allowed now to use the, the national language um, openly in worship. We cannot carry the Bible in the national language across the states. Uh, many of our Bibles have been stamped with, you know, for personal use only, meaning to say you can't take it with you into public spheres. Uh, in, in reality. But the church is growing. And so there we are, Sarawak and uh, Brunei. And uh, Kuching Diocese we have uh, now uh, grown from 20 parishes to 40 uh, with um, 
around 650 worship centers. Uh, this includes longhouses. Those of you who are not familiar with longhouses, it means um, basically a terrace house. House under one roof with 40, 50, 60, some even 80 families. But <coughs> it's fine. You know, the people have their own space. It really is kind of terrace housing, uh, if, if you like. But a real sense of community. Uh, this is the church of the first century feeling, you know, if, if, you, if you ever had the chance to, to visit. And so in some places, we would rather not build a separate building for worship because the community itself is church. Uh, however, we have only 72 members of the clergy. Uh, some of them are non stipendary um, a good number are uh, pretty new in, in the ministry. And so, uh, you know, help is neither there. Uh, let me just show you a little uh, of uh, our life. Back home in, in uh, Kuching, as mentioned uh, by Rachel just now, many of us look at ourselves as SPG. Uh, and not so much as Anglican, you know, but SPG. The closeness, the, the, the impact, the, the, profound impact, the profound impact that the USPG has made and, and uh, the legacy left behind. Um, but this is just uh, to, to show you some, some life, if you like, in the Diocese of Kuching. Um, <coughs> Hopefully, by, by giving you some of these uh, uh, pictures, you, you will feel, uh, um, you know, here is a warm invitation for you, right? Uh, church, as I said, thriving. Uh, we have a big number of young people in church. Most churches, about 30 to 40 percent are young people under 40. Um, it's a big challenge for us. Um, we need youth pastors. Um, Islamization is real in universities, in colleges, in secondary schools. Young people are lured to, to move over. Money is dangled, you know. Um, we'll pay for your fees, we'll give you, you scholarships and, and whatnot um, you know, if, if you join us. And, and this we know is backed by the government. Um, but um, as I was sharing yesterday, the government that we, we had, the government that we managed to get rid of on the 9th of May was a very corrupt government indeed. And the Prime Minister was arrested <coughs> yesterday, uh, the former Prime Minister, and this morning he was brought uh, before the High Court. Um, so, Look out for this space. Uh, follow the story um, with us. Uh, some of our young people and their activities. Uh, right. Uh, now to the, the fifth P, uh, very, very quickly. Uh, partnership. Um, if it isn't important, I think we wouldn't be here. And so I know it is important for you. For us, it really is. For me, on a personal level, my being here with you is largely due to the, the partnership, various levels, different forms. Um, I was sharing with, uh, with our workshop group yesterday of how a Scottish bishop got stranded in, uh, in, uh, in Kuching, in Sarawak, because thanks to climate change, very heavy haze, he couldn't land uh, in Singapore. So the plane was diverted to Kuching. This was Bishop Michael Hayduke of St. Andrews in, in Scotland. I was finishing my four years study 
but uh, too young to be ordained. And so he invited uh, uh, through uh, our bishop, um, uh, he invited me to come to Scotland for three years, uh, which I did 89 to 92. And then uh, through another form of partnership, uh, had the privilege to return to Scotland and serve in uh, the Diocese of Glasgow for seven years with, with my family. But before that, I was trained in Kuching, in the theological college, well supported by USPG. And that included the lecturers. Um, they were all U USPG sponsored, USPG backed. Uh, sadly, however, the, the college is now more or less closed down. We need to revive it um, because we need to train our human power, men and women. Um, but what, what exactly is this <coughs> P, partnership? Uh, yesterday we played around uh, with the word uh, partnership. Um, and just very quickly, because uh, Rachel mentioned the word hip uh, there, but just, just very quickly, um, I think partnership is a very rich word, um, but it is even richer when we enter into it and put it into practice. So uh, partnership, the first word that one can make out of, uh, uh, extract out of this uh, little word, part, we are part of each other. And uh, we, we can't run away from this. The biblical image is we are one body. We are members of each other. We are members of the same body. At the communion, you know, we break the one bread. We share the one cup. We, we, we cannot run away from it. We are part. On our own, we are less than the body of Christ. So we, 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 we are part of the whole. And we are partners. And partners, of course, in, in the, um, the, the, the business uh, sense, very often it is big and, and, and little, or depending on how much share one puts in. But this partnership, as we come to the, the, the fourth word there, we are on par, we are equal. We are differently gifted. Not so much more ably gifted, but differently gifted. Um, some of us will have the finance, others will have the feel. Uh, some of us will have the experience, others will have different wisdom. Um, some of us will have issues that uh, in other parts of the world, there are none issues. And so we, we, we can learn. I mean, one, one of um, the well, almost shocking thing, a human, um, even, even so-called theological human, uh, when, when I first arrived in, in Britain um, in 89, was uh, you know, on, on, on the God's gender. You know, coming, coming from Malaysia, in all our languages, whether it is Bahasa Malaysia, the national language, or Dayaks and, 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 uh, and other indigenous uh, languages, the, the language of God and for God, the issue of God's gender, is a non-issue. God has no sex. I mean, that, that is how we understand God. Uh, we, we, we don't talk about him in uh, his or her term you know, because God is, is beyond gender and we know it. Um, we, 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 we don't have his, hers in, in our language. And so I thought, no, why? You know, and we, we, we spent classes, uh, hours talking, talking about this and I would sit in the class and... Uh, <laughs> You know, um, uh, but yes, uh, so 
we, we are partners. We, we have a lot to learn to, from one another. And I, I'm sure uh, we have little, uh, we, we all have little contributions uh, to make to the whole, towards the whole body. Um, as partners, uh, as Rachel mentioned, the word hip, I, I quite like it. Um, right from the beginning uh, of creation, you know, when, when Adam uh, exclaimed, you know, born of my bone, um, I want to, to push that a little. Um, I want to suggest that, and, and the reality is, the truth is, I believe, we, as a body, we are joined at the, the most important part. And I say the most important part because, um, at least physically, if we are not quite right on the hip, um, we, we, we will uh, face challenges. But we are joined at the hip as brothers and sisters, uh, as Christians, as believers, as the body of Christ, God's church. And so we, we, we cannot run away. If we are disjointed at the hip, we'll be handicapped. You know, however strong we feel, uh, we, we will certainly be, be handicapped. Um, we are disjointed. We become weak. Um, and so we are part of um, um, uh, one another as being equal partners. We are on par. Of course, it is challenging because um, partnership is an art. Um, we have to learn being sensitive, uh, being truthful, respectful, being humble before one another, and, um, and be, being generous in receiving. Um, coming from a church that has been on the receiving side, uh, sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't help build our confidence. And so we have to tell ourselves, you know, we, we have to be generous in receiving as, as well. And, and we have to be confident in offering what we have to offer. So an art there. Uh, but uh, Edgar led us to one important uh, part of this. We are in the ship, actually, the image there. And, and, and uh, in, in partnering <laughs> with one another, if we were to move forward together, the ship, we have to be careful with it. There's a lot that we need to do to control, to direct the ship, to bring it uh, the right balance. Um, otherwise, we can tilt, otherwise we can go the wrong side, and so on. But we are a ship, and isn't that uh, a beautiful image? That's one of the first, and, and you know, an important image of the church, a symbol for the church, ship. Um, and so, I, I, I cannot overemphasize the importance of uh, um, the ship. I mentioned earlier from 1 Corinthians, and we have it here, uh, chapter 12. Um, now, how do we move forward? How do we go forward? What are, are the, the challenges uh, in um, our partnership? How are we doing? Um, I mentioned yesterday uh, from uh, um, the um, uh, three centuries of Christian mission, our, our history book celebrating the 300th anniversary of the USPG. There, you read it, you can see how aggressive USPG has been in helping to develop a better, a more relevant understanding of partnership, of being church, of God's mission, of how we have moved from no, paternal to fret, fraternal, and uh, uh, donor receiver, we, we, and, 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 and the rest. Uh, the big brother, sister, um, uh, small brother, 
uh, small sister. We, we have moved away from that. And that, to me, has been very, very healthy indeed. But the reality is still is that the, the diversity in the church is real. The church, though one body, the church, though one faith, one baptism, one Lord, is diverse. We, we like it or not, we, we have to face the fact that there are differences. Differences in <coughs> emphasis, differences in worldview, differences in management even. Um, differences in structure, differences in emphasis. And so diversity, I believe, is something we, we need to be aware of as we uh, partner with one another. Yet having, having said that, we have a common global mandate that come from our Lord Jesus. Together we are called, together we are sent. This is uh, from our Lord himself. And the mission is to all the world, by all of his people. And so we don't have to read it, Matthew 28, uh, 19 and 24, um, Jesus telling uh, his disciples that this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all the world. Um, but I want to invite you to have a little, maybe mini Bible study if you like, uh, because I, I like this passage uh, from uh, Luke chapter 5, the challenge and blessings of partnership. Um, Luke chapter 5, uh, um, it's a bit too small, but I think we can still read it. I'm sorry to use red. Uh, um, just, just very quickly, look chapter 5. Uh, um, One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesareth, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen uh, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and <coughs> filled both, both boats so full that they began to sink. Well, we, we, can, uh, we can spend an hour or two doing uh, a Bible study, but just very quickly, verse 4. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water. We've done so much already, Lord. We've done so much. Never mind. Put out into deep water. Take some risk. Go into deeper water. Try me, if you like. Let down your nets. I think in, in partnership, we have to do this. Sometimes, um, oh, we have had this relationship, partnership for the last 20 years, and things haven't really changed, you know, stories. But take some risk. Go on, put out into deeper water. Um, Verse 5, a challenge you know, uh, to us. We have worked so hard, we have planned strategically, we have had committee meetings and, and, and so on. <laughs> um, 
I think we have to say this to ourselves and to the Lord, because you say so, Lord, we will try. I will let down the nets. Trusting in one's effort, one's plan, one's strategy, we, we will always fail. Um, but listening to Jesus, obedience to his voice, uh, looking at things from his perspective, I, I am sure we can reap the blessing uh, together. And this is clearly in verse 6 and 7. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish. When they took the risk, when they were willing to let go of their investment, their net. Look, you know, the nets, of course, very precious. What were they doing with the nets? They were washing their nets. Nets are not, you know, for, well, entirely, you know, out there for show, for display. See, whose net is the cleanest. You know, they, they, they were doing that, isn't it? Not? Um, but no, put it out, put it down, and deeper. Um, and so in verse 6 and 7, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that they couldn't handle it. Their nets began to break. Hallelujah. You know? The nets began to break. They couldn't handle it. And so verse 7, so they had to signal to their partners. Not so much come and help, but come to celebrate. Come and see the wonders of God's wonderful work, God's miracle. Come and celebrate. Come and reap together. Yeah? So not so much come and, and, and help us, you know, but come and, and, and celebrate. And so when, when, when they listen, when they're willing to take risk, they caught that large number of fish. They were overwhelmed uh, themselves. What if they didn't call for help? What if uh, they didn't have any partners? Just consider that. But we must remember here that the real partner is not the next bot. The real voice, the real mover, uh, him who is, whose business we are in is the Lord himself. And so I think in, in all partnership, we, we've got to place Jesus, our Lord, as the ground for, for our partnership. Um, moving on, verse 8, uh, right through to 10. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Um, I think sometimes we just have to admit that. Um, Kuching, from our experience, we feel, mm, well, because our relationship has kind of cooled off for a while now, and I think, so Kuching thought, we can stand on our own, but I know we can't, and we shouldn't. Uh, hence, my being here with Julita is to fan once again, you know, the, the relationship. Uh, we still need you, and uh, we believe in some small ways we can contribute towards the wider body of uh, the church as well, because it is only together that we can see the miracles of God, that we can be together astonished by how almighty, how powerful, how good our God is. Uh, can Peter gather all the fish by himself? No. <coughs> Can one boat, one net contain it? No. Very, very quickly, it's 9 for, no, 10, uh, 44 now. Uh, we, we mentioned the diversity. There is such a thing as, um, uh, you know, in, in terms of structures, we are, again, not quite similar, and sometimes structures uh, can, uh, can uh, 
be a hindrance. <coughs> we have got to be aware of that and sometimes I think we need to let loose a little bit of our structure. Um, we've got to be concerned with um, intergenerational or, or even generational uh, partnership um, in partnering with one another. What, what do I mean here? Um, I think a structural partnership is easy, but the generational uh, partnership. R remember our Lord um, uh, said, you know, um, in, in, in Matthew 28, verse 20, remember, be assured, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. What I believe Jesus also mean is remember to take care of the one generation to the other, how you pass the baton. Um, because from this moment of my assuring you to the moment of my second coming, I can't tell you yet how many generations. And so there is that generational um, um, partnership concern, I believe, that we, we need to be concerned about uh, as well. I, I am sorry for having to say this, but I think, I mean, ha having served in, in the church uh, in, in Scotland, one, one of our shortcoming as a church is the, the passing on <coughs> of the gospel message, the good news, the great news to the next generation. I mean, it's, it's lovely to see some young people here but it is a great challenge, isn't it? And, and the challenge for us is currently we have a lot of young people, but we are not ministering well to them. Uh, we need to do more. We need to invest more on them. Um, the church can, can, can die. And I keep telling our young people and, and our, our parents, you know, the church can die in a matter of a generation you know, when we fail to pass on when uh, the, the weak link is broken. Uh, think about it. We need to be concerned too with cross-cultural partnership and issues. The world is getting smaller, so we say, but do we actually <coughs> understand each other better? I, I am not too sure, you know, I, I am not too sure. I think there will always be issues that we don't quite, that we won't be able, you know, um, to fully understand about each other. And, and, you know, because we are different, even as men and women, you know, we, we, there are differences that we've got to live with, that we've got to accept. Uh, let alone as communities of people. Um, um, back home, uh, we, can, uh, we can talk even when, when we have food in our mouth. Uh, how rude, is it not, here, or some of us, you know? Um, li little things like that. Um, you know? So it's, it's okay to say, mm, well, it's very nice, you know? yeah, it's, oh wow, lovely. You know? it's, it shows you enjoy God's goodness, you know. Um, and, but so little things like that. And it doesn't seem to matter, but for some, it does. It's a cross-cultural partnership. How, how do we um, partner one with another? How do we become friends, real friends? Um, with, 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 uh, with one another? Or um, are we happy with, uh, with uh, being FB friends? And uh, wow, look, I have 1,000 friends, 2,000 friends, friends who are not friends at all. You know? um, so as, as brothers and sisters, how do we? Uh, how generous can we be? How sacrificial can we be um, as 
as uh, fellow pilgrims. Ultimately, in any partnership, um, back to what I was saying just now, our Lord Jesus has to be there, uh, has to be the third party, the most important party in it. Uh, this is about relationship, personal relationship with God. The mission that we are in is not our mission, not, not the church mission. Uh, not yours and mine at all. It is God's mission. And so if we are not in it wholeheartedly, <coughs> whole being, if we don't personally belong, if you like, to Jesus, we will be frustrated along the line. But if we are, we can be more generous, more forgiving, more understanding, more receptive uh, in, in our partnership. The kingdom of God is established on the, through the power of God. Our work together, our holding each other's hand and moving forward, we can only find joy and fulfillment when we know we are walking with God and to his glory uh, together. In partnership, if I may go back to Kuching Diocese, um, I think a good number of you here uh, were involved uh, <coughs> and, and still have your heart very much with Bonio Mission Association, BMA. And along with, with um, in similar ways, you know, other mission agencies and association. Um, the BMA, uh, which has been <coughs> tremendously helpful uh, to, to the Diocese of Kuching and Sabah, um, they, they came to a decision of resting it, uh, closing it in 2015, 2015 um, I, I feel rather sad about it, um, you know, the long history of its contribution. And uh, when, when it was closed, and there was an official closure, um, there is a, a sadness in me, I must say, uh, although I haven't <laughs> really been part of it in any way in terms of the leadership uh, from, from our diocese. But I, I just feel very strongly that perhaps it could be reborn, uh, can, um, you know. Um, BMA, you know, it, it was a, you know, a, a UK, a British, if you like, uh, to, just to use the B, it was a British mission association. Well, really it's Borneo Mission Association, but here, I am praying that we would be able, you know, to have a Borneo, Borneo Mission Association so that we can own it, so that we can push ourselves, challenge ourselves, you know, as, as, as a, an association, as a body. Um, and so in, in partnership, I think sometimes we need to think differently. Um, I mentioned of our need for theological training community empowerment. Um, uh, this is something that we are doing uh, or beginning to do in small ways. Uh, this Saturday, for example, we are helping, um, there is a project going on to help a resettled community, a community uh, short change by the government. So the government moved these communities of people, uh, six villages, and told them, we will provide everything for you. We will build you homes, even church, at the cost of two million. <coughs> and then when we were handed uh, this so-called church and vicarage, the church was no more than, you know, it, it was just a simple hall. And the vicarage was no bigger than a small garage. you know, the frustration. And this and, and uh, the fact that the former prime minister uh, was so corrupt, that led me um, to put out in the paper, 
um, you know, the, the, the newspapers, you know, a write up just before the election, you know, let's vote for a new government. Um, not easy, I must say, and maybe even, even right now, uh, I hope I can go back safely and arrive home, uh, uh, you know. Um, but here, here we are um, in, 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 in Malaysia. And so finally, um, 562, uh, I must say terima kasih, uh, meaning thank you. But just a little sharing again. I say terima kasih. Kasih means love. Terima means receive. I say terima kasih because as a church, as a diocese, we have received so much love from USPG, from many of you as partners. And so on behalf of the Diocese of Kuching, I say terima kasih USPG, terima kasih to each one of you too. Thank you. And God bless us together in this journey with him. Amen. Amen.